This is 40K Today. 40K news so important, the Catan wants to bury it for another 60 million years. Welcome to 40K Today. This is your daily 15-minute news, views, and interview show that covers the entire hobby of Warhammer 40,000. I'm your host, John Damaris, and today on the program, Engine War is out and an Imperial Knights got some goodies. Junior of Leahy stops by to fill us in on the exciting new rules. But first, Tanya sits down with Mark Langill to talk about making cool stuff for 40K. The Warhammer community has a preview for the new bikes, which is super sweet. I'm so stoked. I'm a super huge fan of White Scars and the Raven Guard, and I'm sure all of you Battle Brothers and Sisters are as excited as I am. Link, as always, is in the show notes, but it's worth checking out. Sometimes a good tool is worth its weight in gold. Speaking as someone who once started a gaming accessory company, which is a very long story that I'm not going to share today, uh, there is no end to the usefulness of well-thought-out tools. 40K Today's Tanya Gates sits down with Mark Langill to talk about Schooner Labs, purveyors of just those kind of tools and accessories. All right. I'm here with Mark from Schooner Labs, and um, I'm super happy to have you on the show today because I uh, you make some pretty cool stuff um, that help us play this game that we love. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do at Schooner Labs? Well, sure. And well, first, thanks for having me on and the kind words about the, the items we make. Um, yeah, so we basically uh, Schooner Labs kind of evolved out of uh, kind of a, a side business that I have doing some making. I, I own a laser cutter. Um, had a friend actually get into back into Warhammer in 8th edition, um, asked me to make a few things. Um, and then I went down that rabbit hole of making more gaming accessories. And that's been evolving basically is some every time something new comes out or a new game comes out or a new edition or new models. Um, you know, I try to stay on top of that. So it's really, uh, Whatever I can think of or whatever people are asking for, we kind of try to make it to, you know, make the gaming a little bit better and easier. Mm -hmm. So you just sort of fell into making more gaming accessories then? Like, was it something that you had planned to do or just no, sort of by chance? It was totally by chance. Um, wasn't something I really had looked at in the past because I'd never had been, I'd always known about more gaming and more hammer. Um, never played it myself, had been into kind of modeling at a younger age, you know, typical, you know, with model cars, model planes, but never got into the miniature side. Um, but always been involved in kind of the making side. Um, my whole family has done that in the past from, you know, building ultralight aircraft through to, you know, windmills, you name it, um, come from that kind of background. So it's, and then I've been involved, I've been background in IT for 25 years and I got burned out being on the computer all the time. So I wanted to get into more hands-on making. Um, and then really, like I say, the, the war game inside kind of was just a niche that we fell into um, somewhat by accident, but it's definitely one that I've enjoyed. And it's, I think just the, the broad range of it and the fact that it's always evolving is, is really what's kept my interest in it. Mm -hmm. So when we're we're talking about gaming aids, um, what we're talking about is really neat laser cut and magnetic wound counters and CP trackers and all sorts of different things, um, as well as I think don't you do um, like some D and D stuff as well? And it's not just Warhammer; you do like a lot of different games. Yeah, I mean, the, the, probably the bit, the core of it is probably around Warhammer, and that's really kind of where it started. But then from there, it's kind of, once we started putting out Warhammer accessories, we would start getting people asking us like, hey, can you, could you make something similar for Malifaux? Or could you do something different for this RPG game? And, you know, so it's, it's kind of, it's always evolving. We kind of have the core of kind of, you know, out of all those games, I typically just play Warhammer, but I end up buying a lot of different games just to get involved in them. Um, but yeah, it's really, th there's so much crossover between the games, particularly when you're talking at, at it from an accessories point of view. It's it's more, the terminology changes, but you know, you're know you tracking damage, you're tracking victory points, you, you know, it, you're doing measurements, um, you need tokens to um, track certain statuses. So it's, it's very similar. So it's really kind of um, what I find What's interesting about it is when I go into a new game is is doing the research on like, okay, 
what do I need to know about Malifaux that's different than Warhammer to be able to build an accessory for it? Um, so that to me keeps the interest going there. But I think you know Warhammer has always kind of been the, the biggest one out there. So that's certainly going to be the core of what we build going forward, and particularly now. With ninth edition, it's basically a, I'm kind of just sitting here waiting to say, okay, I need the rule book to see what's changed, <laughs> so I, can, I so I know what to make to make it uh, make it better for everybody. Yeah, we're all just sort of sitting here going, whoa, you know, like I can't wait to see what all the changes are going to be. And um, but for me, I think the coolest thing about what you do is like all of the custom stuff that you can do. So like, if I have an idea, could I just come to you to get like a one-off thing made like how does that work exactly no i, I do that a lot of time because basically everything i do because i'm basically a one-man operation for the most part um some help from my family when i need it uh but it's basically everything is made to order regardless so um so i have you know my core designs that i list on for sale um, but if someone wants something modified from that be it hey can you put our club logo on this counter or hey can you do it in a different color or with a different text um, it's generally a fairly quick process where i'm really just you know i have my base files that i'm modifying so i've been offering basically customization pretty much from the start so it's in a lot of cases if it's just modifying something that exists and other times it's it's someone comes to me and say hey, I, I like what you're doing with, you know, with, with this type of counter, but, you know, can you add four dials because I want to track X, Y, and Z? Um, and I'll go off and make that. And really, that may or may not become a product because a lot of times, it, you know, if it's a popular game, great, I can add it to my product line. Uh, but in some cases, I've got um, requests for that are actually new game developers that are, you know, designing their own game and they need a counter for it or it's in a totally obscure game that, you know, there's maybe 10 people on the planet that are playing it. So I don't expect to turn around and sell a lot, but yeah. um, you know, it, it keeps it fresh for me. And it also, every time I do that, it brings in new ideas. So something I may be building for a totally different game may get incorporated into a new accessory for Warhammer in the end. That is so awesome. Uh, I, I'm so happy to have you on the show and to learn a little bit more about what you do over at Scooter Labs. And um, we'll make sure to have all the links uh, for everybody to find you in our show notes. Great. Um, but thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. No, I really appreciate that. And uh, looking forward to listening to your show. That was Tanya Gates speaking with Mark from Schooner Labs. Links, as always, are in the show notes. Next up, Junior Flay stops by to tell us all about the Imperial Knights. Today's episode of 40k Today is brought to you by Frontline Gaming. Frontline Gaming is a one-stop shop for all your Warhammer hobby needs, discounted products, American-made gaming mats and terrain, and a full line of miniatures painting service and daily hobby content. And this can all be found at FrontlineGaming.org. Welcome back! Junior Aflahi has been putting ginormous knight boot to rear all across 8th edition. With lots of interesting variations, including feeling the mighty valiant, Junior has finished well in most of the major events he's been to and has been an absolute terror on the scene for a long, long time. Is he excited about the new engine war goodies and buffs for Imperial Knights? Let's find out. Junior, welcome to the show. We are super duper excited to have you because we get to talk about some of my favorite models, the Imperial Knights. Now, they just had a Psychic Awakening drop. Have you had a chance to look over the rules? I did. Um, I got the Psychic Awakening book, um, did some studying, and I'm, I'm excited for, for some of these uh, new interactions for my army. So, Okay, well, let's talk about it. So you, you have obviously a very competitive bent or slant or take on the game because uh, you compete very well with Imperial Knights. What are you most excited to get on the table? Like maybe give us three things that you think will be competitive and, and you're excited to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll start with the, uh, the, the one thing that I like about the Allegiance um, the Imperialis, the Vow of Honor. What's nice is you get, you know, plus one to your advance and charge rolls. Um, they don't stack with Lance Rider, but just getting a, a sweet bonus like that, just for being a knight, um, I think it's really needed. Um, but as far as like what I look forward to playing, um, one of the things that I use all last season, well, most of the season, I should say, was a Valiant, um, Hawksrod Valiant. Caught a lot of people off guard with the, that two CP stratagem to, uh, overwatch for imperium units um the one right, nice thing is 
And the Valiant's the one that has the big flamer, right? So, yep. <laughs> so that is a really, really nasty Overwatch if you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, uh, catching people off guard, you know, they can Overwatch for other units, kind of like Tau. Um, was really sweet. Uh, the nice thing, though, is uh, you know that you would uh, flame them, and then they would still charge you. Well, Psychic Awakening, they got a sweet little uh, stratagem for one CP. Um, so after your Valiant has fired Overwatch, you can subtract two from the charge rolls made for units that um, that the model targeted. So it's it's uh, pretty nice anytime you can subtract from the charge rolls. And what's nice about the, the Valiant is a lot of people take the Traitor's Pyre for Imperialis, and you can reroll wounds. That's gross. So actually, minus two to charges is, is a huge number. It doesn't seem like it'd be that that impactful but i mean all you have to do is talk to anybody that tries to charge impulsors and they'll tell you that it's like or charge through craters or worse yet you know the valiant is start standing in a crater <laughs> suddenly you've got a real problem right so yeah. that is really really powerful because even better than having a good overwatch and doing a bunch of damage to them on the way to their coming in is them never getting there right so yep um another thing that i look forward to using is uh the good old gallant um, so not only are you getting plus one to your advance and charge, um, but they have a new uh, stratagem for line breaker. Um, what that does, it increases their piling and consolidation moves to six inches. So if you really want a, a gallant moving through somebody's line, um, that's going to be a nice stratagem on a, on that kind of unit. Yeah. So you can use that to like, you know, maybe you punch a hole in a unit or whatever, and then a six inch consolidate, and then you tie up everything behind it that they didn't want you to tie up, which is a big deal because, you know, it's not like there's a lot of things you can tie up, like, uh, you know, thunder fire cannons or whatever else you can get a hold of where, you know, you just shut them all off for a turn. I think I, I could see why you'd be excited about that. Plus, gallons are super cheap, right? They're like a really efficient point cost model. Um, they're the cheapest of the big units um, because they don't have really any kind of fire um, support uh, really um, they have heavy stubbers but um, one of the things that they have again if you take that in house Terran uh, they have a fight a fight twice stratagem and so imagine going six inches pile in consolidate and then fight again immediately after not the not at the end but it, immediately so oh then another six inch consolidate so really he just gets to get as deep as he wants there's yeah. there's no there's no screen that guy. Like, <laughs> There's no screen in that guy. Plus, uh, Imperialis still have that three CP stratagem to outflank a knight, so you can start them nine inches away um, from a board edge. So it's really powerful. Well, that's um, cool. So, and, and actually, if you think about it, with the way it looks like um, ninth edition is going to be, you're probably going to have more CPs to play with, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot more CP, so you can invest more into these knights. Um, that, that gallant that I was talking about for Imperialis, uh, one of the new Warlord traits that you can give them, uh, you subtract one to hit roll in, the, in close combat against him, and he also subtracts one to attacks from vehicles and monsters. So he's more survivable. Well, that's really cool. So you... <laughs> So uh, if I'm picking up what you're putting down, you tell me if, if I'm I'm kind of picking this up. But you can basically rocket this guy into somebody's lines, do a ton of damage, tie up a bunch of stuff that he doesn't want tied up. And then when they go to counterpunch it, you can make it minus one to hit and minus one to attack. You know, if they come in with, like like you said, a monster or something. Um, that's pretty cool, actually, because, <laughs> you know, even if that just means that thing is around for one more turn. I mean, that's kind of a deal with it or else it, the game can kind of spiral out of control really, really yep. fast. And that's all you need. You need it to, to last a couple of turns. Um, you can still give it the relic to um, have a four up invulnerable in close combat with the rotate ion shields. So that's one of the things that's exclusive to Imperial Knights that Chaos Knights don't have. Um, so that's, uh, again, survivability. It's huge for Knights. Also, the two plus armor is also pretty good depending on what you're against, right? Yep, that's also um, another one. So Imperial Knights have been more defensive versus Chaos Knights. They really put out a lot of damage. So it's like they're yin and yang. Very cool. All right, well, Junior, thanks for breaking it down. It sounds like Psychic Awakening has given you a lot of tools to play with. So it'll be an interesting time going into the new edition. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to playing my Knights in, in the, the tournament scene here coming up. That was Junior, and I think once we get into ninth edition, Knights might once again be a staple on the tables. Okay, folks, 
it's that time of the day. Let's get pumped up. It's time for Model of the Day. It's the, the Model of the Day. The, the Model of the Day. The, the Model of the Day. Chris's converted Necron Lord has a great green and blue color scheme with metallic accents. This model has been given multiple arms to fit the backstory, and the base has been fitted with a relic, the Veil of Darkness. This amazing piece of sculpture is just too cool and really tells a story on the tabletop. This model earned Chris a finalist pin in the 2018 Golden Demon competition, and we can see why. If you have a model that you want us to feature in the show, don't be shy. Contact us. Let us know. Hit us up on Facebook at 40K Today or use our hashtag, hashtag 40K Today on Instagram, and we'll come find your model. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. A big thanks to our content producer, Alex Boehner, and our social media ace, Tanya Gates, and our technical producer, Seamus Ronan, for all their hard work once again in putting this program together. If you have anything you think we should feature on the show, please get in touch. If you have an amazing army or a YouTube channel or a great hobby tip, contact us on Facebook. Just search 40K Today. We'll see you tomorrow. But until then, for the 40K Today team, I'm John Damaris, and that's what's happening in 40K Today.